It's time, 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 time. She's spilling the tea. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee oh. on The Breakfast Club. Well, we discussed previously Donald Trump's pardons, and one of the people that he pardoned was Michael Harry O. Harris, Death Row Records co-founder. He was in prison for over 30 years on drug trafficking and murder charges, and now he's done his first interview with the Daily Mail. He was very emotional and thankful for the opportunity. Here's what he had to say about freedom. It was an awestruck moment. I'm riding in the car with my folks, and we're coming back from the prison. I just had a presence of mind, and I just says, I don't feel it. And, and they says, what? I said, I don't feel what I just left. And, and that doesn't mean I don't feel the souls that I left in prison. But before that moment, I felt like I had never been in prison. Mm. That's how powerful freedom is. Mm. Wow. Now he does want to use his position now to fight for criminal justice reform, and he wants to work with both Democrats and Republicans. Here's what else he had to say. And I'll tell you, man, every day, man, even now, I think about my participation, and it makes me sick to my stomach that I let them trick me to help kill my people. You understand that? That's killing me even today. Man, that brother needs a therapist or something. Prison, prison is a traumatizing experience. Now, how do you even make that adjustment after almost 30-plus years in prison? And he shouldn't beat himself up too much for what he was, you know, uh, doing while he was just trying to survive. You know what I mean? Because he was just playing with the cause he was dealt at the time. Well, he's 59 years old now, and he is a free man. All right, Michael Strahan has tested positive for COVID-19, and that's why he hasn't been on Good Morning America all week. They said he only appeared remotely for Fox NFL Sunday because he's been taking these precautions. He's not experiencing any severe symptoms, but he does have daughters and his daughters did come into contact with him after he'd been exposed. So they're getting tested as well. And so Jeez. is their mother who they live with most of the time. So right now they're, we're not sure how much longer he'll be quarantining, but he's taking it being safe. Yeah. Now, when I hear people like Michael Strahan tested positive for COVID, I need to know if they got symptoms or not. If he's asymptomatic, mm -hmm. I send my well wishes. I don't necessarily send prayers because God is, is backed up with prayers right now. There's a lot of prayers going to God. Well, you can send your well wishes. Well and prayers, wishes, not you and well wishes. Too, if you're if you're actually sick and got symptoms, I send prayers. If you're just asymptomatic, I send well wishes. God is, you know, do both. God is on back order right now. Do both. Well, he's you. not experiencing any severe symptoms, fortunately, but he okay. just got diagnosed. Well, I send him mm -hmm. my well wishes. All right, now the Seattle Seahawks defensive lineman Chad Wheeler, he was arrested over the weekend and they were called by a woman. The police were called by a woman. She had locked herself in the bathroom and she told a 911 dispatcher that she was being killed. According to re the report, Chad Wheeler attacked her, dislocated her shoulder and choked her to the point of unconsciousness. And when she woke up, he uh, she says that he was shocked that she was still alive. She said what was most terrifying was how cold he was. He thought I was dead on my bed and continued to eat dinner. When I ran into the bathroom, he said, wow, you're still alive while sipping on a smoothie. So uh, Chad Willow was taken into custody. He initially refused to cooperate with officers. His bail is $400,000. He was released Tuesday morning. This is domestic violence. And he did go on social media and say, events happened over the weekend that transpired from a manic episode. I am deeply sorry for the pain and suffering that I have caused to Aaliyah and her family. I apologize profusely for the turmoil that I have caused to my family teammates, fans, and those closest to me, the most important thing right now is that Aaliyah gets the care she needs and I get help. Both are happening. It is time for me to walk away from football and get the help I need to never again pose a threat to another. I cannot express my sorrow or remorse enough. I am truly ashamed. So he has been charged with first degree domestic violence assault, domestic violence, unlawful imprisonment, and resisting arrest. He will be arraigned on February 9th. That's horrible. He had a manic episode. Is he on medication or something? Does he? Yeah, they said he was on medication, but he didn't uh, take his medication the last couple of days. They said everything was fine. They said there was no argument, no beef. He just snapped. And they believe maybe he has a, some type of bipolar. Well, if he's on well his, prescription, his prescription is for a bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And he, he didn't take it. So, you know, the, if you saw the pictures of the woman, I mean, her face is all bloodied under mm -hmm. her nose, under her everything. It looks awful. And that has to be one of the scariest things. And what do you do in a situation like this? Yeah, you know, it's, you know, yeah. it's, I, I don't know. If he's bipolar and he's not on his medication, I mean, he, he snapped. 
right? But what happens in that situation? Because, you know, the young lady, the family, the young lady, you know, he you should, don't know. He feel like he should be locked up. I mean, he, he, That's he almost killed mm-hmm. her. Like, she said she was out. And then when he, she said when she woke back up and ran to the bathroom, he was like, oh, I thought you were dead. And then he came in the bathroom and then apologized. But, you know, but he, he uh, clearly he needs help, I mean, he though. definitely should be locked up, but he also should be getting help while he's locked up. Mm-hmm. He should be getting I mean, look, he's 310 pounds. He's 145 pounds. Yeah, but he should, Think about he, that. he should be locked up and he should be definitely getting some type of mental health care treatment while he's incarcerated. But I don't know what well, you that, do with that. If you if you if you're already taking medication, if you're already taking medication, well, that can happen at any moment. But he didn't. He take wasn't it. taking it. He wasn't taking it. Mm. Allegedly. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. Thank you, Miss. What if you should arrest people for not taking their medication? And the reason I say that is because of situations like this. If you're no, if you know that you're a threat to society, if you're not taking your medication. But shouldn't, shouldn't there be some type it's of It's hard though because when people medication? take their medication, they feel better and then they think they don't need it. Yeah, they think they don't I actually, need it. I actually worked for somebody who ended up committing suicide. He wasn't taking his medication because it also made him feel sick. And so it made him nauseous. So he had stopped taking it and he had a, a chemical imbalance and he ended up committing suicide. But you don't know what can happen when you don't take it. But sometimes you feel like I'm better. I don't need it yeah, anymore. I don't need this sometimes anymore. you feel like I'm, this is making me sick. I don't want to take it. It's a lot of nuance to this situation. I don't yeah. know. I, I'm not. I'm not an expert. I don't know what needs to be done. All right. Well, front page news. Next, what are we talking about? Uh, well, let's talk about this town hall that just happened, and we got to talk about this vaccine and coronavirus. All right. We'll do that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> 